unstable power grids, planned shutdown of electrical power, or even blackouts. How can we prepare our homes and home automation systems against such events? Today we will cover these topics with the eyes of an engineer, and I will show you how I protect our home against short and longer outages. I divided the topic into two parts. You currently watch part one. Part two will air next week. Gritty YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you will always sit in the first row. How do I define short and long outages? Short outages are from milliseconds to a few minutes. The rest I classify as long. The most significant effects of short outages are on electronic devices without batteries. In our home, this is mainly the network and the PC. Even a very short power outage creates a reboot of such systems. This leads to the loss of unsaved data on a PC and if you are unlucky, your PC gets a hiccup and no more boots without massaging. And we all know this massaging usually needs quite some knowledge and time. If your modem or network switches reboot, all your wireless gadgets lose connectivity. Not nice if you have a smart home. Most of your lights and other connected devices will not work even if power is back because it takes a while to reconnect to the network. And sometimes they need manual interaction to get them going again. Imagine this happens when you are on a business trip and your family is home. In my case, if the network goes down, it always needs some manual interaction. Be it that I have to reset the cable modem a second time because it does not connect to my ISP, or be it that one or more of my many ESP32s or Raspberry Pis does not connect automatically and needs a manual reboot. Preventing unexpected shutdowns seems simple. We need a small backup battery and connect all critical devices to such a battery. But first, we need a list of the critical infrastructure. In my case, it includes a cable modem, a MicroTIC router, several small switches, two MicroTIC access points, a beefy PC including SSDs, and my ThinClient PC running Proxmox, Home Assistant and IoT stack. All other devices like the printer or various USB devices are not considered critical. The next task is to decide which voltage level you need for the backup battery. My critical devices run on 12, 24 and 48 volt DC, as well as on 240 volt AC. If you use a laptop instead of a PC, the backup battery is already built in. If your home server is a Raspberry, you can buy a backup battery that lasts for a few hours. And if you only have 5 and 12 volt devices, you probably can go with such a cheap UPS. Not for me, unfortunately, because of my additional voltage levels. Because all the devices of my critical list run off mains and my access points get the juice via power over ethernet, I can connect all critical devices to a single cable in my lab. So the easiest and cheapest way is a standard mains UPS instead of several batteries on all DC levels. The next question is, what power do the devices on the list consume? Here they consume around 300 watts and 360 volt ampere. Because I'm Swiss, I want a UPS with at least 30% bigger power. So 500 watts and 800 volt amperes should be okay. Next, we have to decide how long the power should last until I either properly shut all devices down or till the long-term backup power is ready. My PV system needs less than 5 seconds to switch from grid to off-grid. So this is not a deciding factor. If you use a fuel-powered emergency generator, it will probably take a bit longer to start. If you have no long-term backup possibility, the UPS offers to power your PC down automatically. If you use Hibernate, all your work should be safe. 
Don't use sleep, because all data will be lost during a power down. So we know the basic parameters for the selection of a UPS. If we start the selection, we quickly discover that we can choose between online, offline and line interactive UPS. What is the difference? All mains UPS have a battery to store some energy, an inverter to convert the DC of the battery to mains AC and a charger for the battery. Let's start with the cheapest type, the offline UPS. During regular operation, the mains is directly connected to the load by this switch. As soon as the battery is fully charged, this type of UPS should not consume energy anymore. As soon as mains is switched off, the inverter is switched on and connected to the load. If this is done fast, the load should not feel much difference and should remain running. The battery is depleted during this time. As soon as the mains is switched on again, this switch moves to its default position and the battery starts to be charged. Because of the small charger, this usually takes hours, by the way. The line interactive UPS is very similar. It has an additional auto transformer that can regulate the voltage within certain limits. This is needed if the mains voltage fluctuates a lot. This regulation, by the way, is only active during regular operation. Without mains, the inverter creates the stable voltage. Because an auto transformer has a high efficiency, this type should have a similar efficiency that the offline UPS. The last type is the online UPS. During operation, this type has no connection from the mains to the load. Because it has a strong charger, it powers the inverter directly. The battery stays charged all the time. No switching is needed because the inverter always supplies the load. Online UPS have a lower efficiency because during regular operation they lose two times power. But they provide a clean and stable mains voltage. We find two types of inverters. Some supply a modified rectangular curve and others create a sine wave. The sine wave inverters are more expensive and usually found in online UPS. Consumer electronics usually can live with rectangular curves if you do not care about more radio frequency interference. I'm okay with it because my inverter only runs for a few seconds. Because mains voltage is stable and clean in Switzerland, I went for an offline model and choose this Eaton Ellipse 800. Its specs are 500 watt or 800 volt ampere, which is about 50% more than the power needed. If I connect a 100 watt bulb, it creates a modified sine wave. For sure, never a sine. If I switch its input power off, we see how fast it starts the inverter. The PC and the network components keep running, as expected. Unfortunately, this is not always the case. I had a few occasions where the PC and the network rebooted. I have to do more tests to see if I find the root cause. In the meantime, I cannot recommend this device. What is your experience with the brand? How can you integrate and manage the UPS? Mine came with a USB connector and a Windows management app. On Linux, I installed NUT, the network UPS tool. Its installation needs a lot of configurations. This is why I leave a link to a video where you can learn it. If everything works, you can integrate it into Home Assistant. With these integrations, you can add an automatic shutdown of your server and your PC before the battery of the UPS is empty. Maybe stuff for another video. Summarized. To protect my network and the PC against short outages, I installed the UPS. We can choose between an offline, a line interactive and an online UPS. I choose an offline UPS because it is cheaper and has the best efficiency. Unfortunately, the Eaton Ellipse Echo does not always work as expected. From time to time, it cannot protect my network and PC. Is it only my device? Most UPS offer a USB or Ethernet management interface. The Windows management app that came with my UPS enables an automatic shutdown of one PC. 
On Linux systems, NUT is the preferred solution. It is a universal interface to most available UPS brands. Next week, I will show you how I protected our home against long-term power outages using our PV. I will also include how it can be done with a conventional emergency generator. This was all for today. As always, you find the relevant links in the description. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. Thank you. Bye.